Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Anthony Fox. Uh, I'm from, uh, I work for a company out of Charlottesville, Virginia called Commonwealth Computer Research. Um, and we developed GeoMesa, which we open sourced about a year ago and uh, connected with the Location Tech team. Uh, and now GeoMesa is under the Location Tech umbrella. I'm going to talk today about GeoMesa, uh, what it is, how it came to be. I'm also going to talk a little bit about distributed databases, um, which is uh, what GeoMesa is. And uh, I'm going to dive into how we do a little bit of our indexing uh, to enable geospatial data in a um, non-relational database. And uh, eventually, I'm going to get to a few analytics that I'll uh, show how we leverage GeoMesa to build on top of. So first of all, what is uh, GeoMesa? Many, uh, many of you uh, have either been, uh, by your customers, been dictated to move to a cloud, or some of you have an actual justification and a need to move to a cloud. In our case, uh, it's a little bit of both. We were directed to migrate an analytic that had a, uh, intense co computational requirements uh, to a cloud-based system. And the, the tools that we had come to rely on, the rich geospatial uh, um, functionality that's available in PostGIS, was just not available to us on the cloud. So we developed enough of the geospatial capability um, that we needed to support our analytic, and then quickly realized that it was useful on its own. So we decoupled it from the analytic, and we open sourced it. So GeoMesa is the result of that. It is a distributed spatiotemporal database. Uh, in particular, it's built on the Accumulo um, column family database, which I'm going to go into more details about. But more importantly, it's the goal of GeoMesa is to be a runtime-only dependency of projects. So it implements all the GeoTools, the standard GeoTools data store API, uh, and and it also exposes data in these distributed databases via standardized services like ODC um, that we have uh, we exposed via GeoServer plugins. The point being that you should never have to import a GeoMesa class into your application. You should just have to import the uh, Geo tools, the relevant geo tools interfaces, and work with those directly. And the geospatial computations are transparently executed on the cloud. Uh, again, it's location tech open source. Some of the visualizations you're seeing here are associated with um, the GDELT data set. GDELT is the global database of events, language, and tone. It's put out by uh, UPenn and UT Austin, I believe. And um, it's 250 million geocoded events uh, since 1979, about 100 gigs of uh, uncompressed data. And just to give you some performance numbers, we can ingest that data into the system on a small virtualized cloud in approximately 15 minutes. And then we can do uh, analytics against them. And these are visualizations against that data set. So a little bit of justification about uh, high, uh, cloud-based geo, why would you need this? Well, you don't have to look very far to see high-velocity spatiotemporal data. Twitter does about 100 to 150,000 tweets per second. A small percentage of those are geotagged, but a small percentage of a very large number is still a reasonably large number. Foursquare claims to do 1 million check-ins a day. Uh, everybody's doing geolocated click streams, so Marketers and advertisers are very interested in geolocated click streams. I'm going to show you how you can actually um, correlate geolocated uh, click streams via an analytic that we've developed. Satellite imagery, pretty obvious. Uh, vehicle and traffic sensors, so FAA and um, car traffic sensors, generate tons of high velocity data. So you have a need for a distributed database. Uh, because you have more data that can fit on a single machine's disk or can be processed within a single shared memory space. Uh, so the customer dictates that you use a uh, column family database. So Google published a paper in about 06 or 07 on a system called Bigtable. And quickly after that, a number of derivative databases uh, started to crop up. Amongst those derivative databases are HBase, it's built directly on the 
the big table model, Cassandra, uh, and Accumulo. Accumulo focuses on uh, security, so it does uh, high resolution cell level security, which um, we're starting to support in GeoMesa. Uh, it's these distributed databases, particularly these key value stores, have uh, very flexible schemas. So it's easy to get up and going with them, but it's not schema list. Your application always imposes a schema on the data. You have, to you have to understand your data and you have to do something with it. What this means is that the complexity of query planning is pushed up into your application layer. So you have to make these interesting trade-offs where you have potentially a multi-tenancy database and each application is uh, dictating how they're doing scans and how they're using resources. So you have to balance between flexible schemas and potentially um, conflicting uh, data access patterns. Um, it's horizontally scalable. This is a very nice feature, and I'm, I'm going to talk about how, that's, how we leverage that. Um, in particular, Accumulo has the notion of tablet servers. Tablet servers uh, at a single table is spread across many tablet servers, and we can actually take advantage of the processing and I.O. bandwidth of multiple tablet servers. Um, and Accumulo will handle failover and balancing and um, rebalancing and all the uh, nitty-gritty distributed complexity. Uh, but here's another trade-off, which is that in PostGIS, you have very nice and sophisticated R trees and quad trees and, and your traditional um, <laughs> spatial indexes, which work incredibly well on, on relatively, um, relatively sized data sets. Well, when you go to one of these column family databases, you don't have many indexes. You have to design your table such that your table has a secondary index. The only index that's actually available to you is an implicit lexicographic ordering of the keys in your key value store. So this is a, a critical element that has to be thought through very carefully when um, pushing geospatial data, because obviously geospatial data is multidimensional. When you add time, you're looking at three-dimensional data. Uh, so how do we go about leveraging distributed databases for the qualities that they have that are advantageous. Well, we can do partitioning very easily. Partitioning almost comes for free, whereas with relational databases, you have to do a lot of work at the application layer to do partitioning. With distributed databases, partitioning uh, is effectively given to you, and uh, you, we're able to distribute queries across multiple machines. So these are concurrent queries by different uh, um, applications or users, and they can be spread or load balanced across these resources. We use uh, striping to distribute computations within a single query. So a single query, we can actually uh, split it up into all of the tablet servers. So if you have 100 tablet servers, then you can potentially have 100 processors that are executing on your query. So this makes um, some of the very large data sets uh, operational and interactive. The trade-off that you're making with that is that when you, if, when you um, stripe the data across all of your resources, you incur um, a cost when you have concurrent queries from many users because all of your resources are being brought, all of your resources are being brought to bear on every single query. So we have a flexible um, element of the indexing structure that allows you to. Um, tune the amount of parallelism you're going to get per table. Uh, Accumulo has uh, an extension point called server-side iterators, which we uh, leverage in GeoMesa to provide geospatial and CQL and eCQL query semantics at the data um, rather than uh, as secondary scans. We can also embed custom analytics. I'm going to show some examples of that inside these server-side iterators. So they essentially become ad hoc and interactive MapReduce-like computations. Uh, no, that's the last bullet point. OK. Ooh. OK, so I only have about five minutes left. Um, so I'm going to go through this really quickly uh, at this point. Uh, the key to um, working with key family, uh, key value data stores uh, that have an implicit lexicographic ordering is to use space filling curves. So space filling curves are a 
one-dimensional data structure that allows you to project multi-dimensions into a linear space. So uh, I have a nice little video here that took me a while, so I'm going to play this one real quick. So this shows how the space filling curve uh, fills up the space that we're interested in filling. Obviously, the z-axis is time. But what you can see in that second front bar right there is that striping. Each portion of the geographic time space actually contributes to each tablet. So the tablets are st so the data is striped across all all of the tablets uh, in a structured way um, to process these queries. Oops. Uh, this is uh, complex polygons uh, and and line strings. Uh, you essentially decompose the polygon into multi-resolution uh, geohashes. Geohash is the implementation of space filling curves that we're using. It's a z-order curve. Um, and then you store each uh, decomposed geohash as an element in your index space. And query pl planning amounts to computing the stripes that are candidates for results of your query. minutes left, so I'm going to get to uh, analytics real quick. The uh, analytics that we've developed, we've implemented them all as WPS services, uh, and they're deployed in GeoServer, so they're discoverable. Uh, some of the analytics, in particular this one, is a spatiotemporal prediction analytic. It predicts events in space and time. And uh, one of the interesting things about this analytic is that um, it's Santiago, Chile, and it's uh, robbery events in Santiago. So we're predicting robbery events. And actually, it's hard to see, but uh, just in that uh, little area below the red, below the seven, I believe, um, is a stadium. And we recently transitioned from a linear model to a, a nonlinear model that's able to detect that the threat from robberies is higher around the stadium than inside of the stadium is kind of exciting. And all of that's implemented as server-side iterators in this. Um, let's see. Any type of uh, associative computation can be cast as a MapReduce job. And this isn't native MapReduce. It's MapReduce implemented within uh, iterators. So for instance, uh, density computations can be uh, done very rapidly by uh, computing a sparse density matrix or any kind of transformation matrix. Uh, in, within each tablet server, so you have 100 uh, workers that are brought to bear on your computation. And the reduce side uh, applies the associative operation, which in the case of uh, densities is just a summation. And, but, but you can express many different types of computations this way, which is kind of nice. Um, another interesting analytic that we've developed as a WPS that's implemented within the server-side iterators is this interpolated time-space query. Basically, you would like to see um, who you might have interacted with uh, on a trip that you've made. So it's, it's time interpolation as well as space interpolation. Um, we like to think of it as tweeting the New Jersey Turnpike. So you have an, a, um, a person that is tweeting as they're traveling on the New Jersey Turnpike. And you would like to know who might be on the megabus with them or who they might have stopped and interacted with. Um, so you have to do a complex series of queries um, that uh, shift time through each gap. And you have to interpolate uh, a track based on uh, the road network or some other kind of uh, underlying layer. So possible interactions um, is, is, is the result of this analytic that's executed by WPS. And with gap filling and, and snap to road tracks, we can get more uh, information. A quick roadmap about uh, GeoMesa. We're pushing for a 1.0 release in June. Uh, we are implementing full PKI-based authentication and authorization so that we integrate with the cell level security of Accumulo. We uh, have already implemented um, Avro binary encoding and relational projections that allow us to subset the data and rapidly return just what we need for each query. Um, in the fall, we're looking at integrating deeply with GeoServer um, and the Hadoop ecosystem. So uh, WPSs will be executed across a variety of compute uh, paradigms like Storm, 
and MapReduce and Spark. Um, and uh, tile caching can be um, pushed into uh, HDFS or within Accumulo. Uh, and we're also looking at doing uh, data and query statistics and how those might improve our query planning um, performance. Quick couple of links here. Uh, the locationtech.org website um, lists some information about Geomesa. We have a geomesa.org website that has tutorials and um, other uh, demonstrations. And there's a user's mailing list and a dev mailing list. Uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. I don't know if I have any time. Oh, we'll have common questions. OK, yeah. common questions.